Hey everyone, it's Eth Klein, and in today's video we're going to take a step back and approach algorithmic trading and financial analysis from an even more foundational approach. We'll be looking into some basic libraries such as Pandas and NumPy in order to do some elementary financial analysis of equities. Today's video will be an introduction to financial analysis with Python, as well as a quick dive into some graphical interfaces that can be created with stock data. We will be pulling stock data from a data data object that can retrieve information directly from Yahoo Finance and can be exported or imported via CSV, commonly viewed in an Excel file. If you like the video, please like and subscribe, and you can let me know if you have any questions or concerns in the comment section below. All right, guys, so the first thing we're going to do is look into some of the libraries that we'll be needing for this um, workbook. And the first one we're going to look at is matplotlib, which is a graphical interface that can be used to display, um, in our case, stock data in a much more appealing format. So what we're going to do is import matplotlib plypot. Um, this will allow us to easily graph our stock data. And to add some styling to it, we're going to import the style functionality. And in addition to matplotlib, we're going to need to work with dates in order to get stock time, stock data from certain date ranges. So for that, we're just going to import date time as DT, so we can use it as that variable name. And next, we're going to look into what I was explaining before, which is the pandas library. So you're going to import pandas, um, and that's going to allow us to do the bulk of our data analysis, including um, using a new data structure called a data frame, which is really important for da uh, data analysis and very important for, in our case, financial analysis. Um, and also, in addition to regular pandas, we're going to include uh, the pandas data reader, which is our method of importing the data from Yahoo Finance itself. So now we're going to uh, look at the style that we might need to add for the uh, matplotlib plots in order to make them more um, easily readable for us to extract information from them. So we're going to do style, and we're going to use a ggplot style, which is my preference, but there are others that can be easily used um, in order to just make it more readable, nothing very extreme. Uh, the next step, we're going to be using two different date times, one start time and one end time in order to effectively create a date range that we're going to extract the information from Yahoo Finance from. So we're going to do a start date, um, make a variable that date time, and we're going to have it from, let's say, 2010, March 5th, um, then an end date, um, which will be around maybe 2015. So we're going to use three years of data. Um, not as much as you want in a better and more efficient model, uh, but for our purposes, for this tutorial, it is perfectly adequate. Uh, next, we'll be creating our first data frame, which is what we'll need pandas for. And data frame is a unique type of data structure that um, can be used extensively in financial analysis. And so we're gonna get that from calling the data reader object and we're gonna look at Apple today because it's a standard stock that most people know and they'll be able to easily uh, just have an idea of what the stock price is and understand the the reasons behind its rise or fall in stock price over this um, determined date time so then we first there's four inputs to this data reader the stock ticker then the source of the data and now we're going to do the date range. So we have the start date and then the end date. And so now we've effectively been able to get the data from Yahoo. So we're going to want to print out some of the data. Let's look at the end. So tail is how you look at the end. These are the last 10 entries. So basically from 10 days before March 5th, 2015 until March 5th, 2015. And let's take a look what that looks like. So now we see, you can see the dates as the index and then the high price for that day, the low price for that day, the opening price, the closing price, and the volume, which is the amount of shares traded in that trading day. 
So now that we've gathered this information from Yahoo Finance, we can perform some analysis on it, including transforming it into a CSV to make it more readable and us for able to view the entire file. So how you do that is you do the variable name df dot to CSV, pretty simple. And then you just give it the name of the file that you want it to have in your directory. So apple.csv, aapl, ticker symbol, dot CSV. And if we hit run, it will process and be done. And if I go to my folder, I see apple.csv right here. I click on it and it has the CSV format. And it might not be very very pretty in this format, but we can download this file and open up right in Excel and it'll look just like a normal Excel file, easy to use, easy to view. And then we could also re-import this file or a different file with other stock prices into uh, Jupyter Notebooks or your Python Notebook. Um, this can be done to get data, different data sets, larger data sets, maybe you're doing a, a Kaggle competition, whatever you need. If you want to read in some CSV, we can read it in by doing the pandas.readcsv function. You take in the name, and if it's not in your directory, then you have to put the directory path. If it is, then just the file name. And then we're going to set the index column to zero, representing that the date will, in fact, be the index. And so now that we've read the CSV back in, we're just going to make sure it's working by printing the first 10 um, data sources from the CSV file. So we run it, and yes, it has these um, first 10 up here, including the date, the high price, low price, opening price, closing price, amount of shares traded, and the adjusted close, which represents stock price after splits. So now we're going to look into plotting some of the information that we've retrieved from Yahoo Finance. And the first thing we're going to look at is the close because it can give you an accurate representation of how the stock price has adjusted over time. And we can do this by simply doing data frame and then looking into the close index within it. And then we just call the dot plot function. And we should be able to get a graph that shows us right here the stock price at close over time. So the date is the x-axis and then the y-axis is price. And we can see that there's a general upward trend throughout the uh, period that we're looking at. So now we're gonna look into what I went over a little bit last video, which is the moving average. So we're gonna compare two different moving averages for the stock one the 100-day moving average and the other 200-day moving average and we're just gonna see how we can calculate them in Python and then how to plot them. So to look at the 100-day moving average we're gonna make a new column called 100 uh, moving average and we're gonna set that equal to we're gonna pull the data from the adjusted close column and then we're going to do dot rolling the window period is 100 because we're looking at a 100 day moving average and the number of minimum periods is zero. This isn't necessary, but it's nice to add. And then we're going to take the average. So what this is doing is going over the 100 previous days and taking the average of the adjusted close for each day. And so if we want to do the same thing, but for 200 days, we could simply copy this paste it, make the column 200 day moving average, adjusted close, and then the window would be 200. And we're just gonna go ahead just to make this easier and drop the um, columns that are NA because there wasn't enough data at the time to make a 100 day moving average. So like the first 100 days, first 200 days, there won't be any data there because it wasn't a long enough time period. Um, and now we're just gonna print the first few or the final few entries to see what our new uh, dictionary, I mean our new pandas data frame looks like. So now we can see that we've added in addition to the previous columns such as the high price, low price, opening price, etc. We have these two final 100 day moving averages and then 200 day moving averages and we can see these numbers differ. Um, quite substantially, so one's around 100 to 100, 102 to 104, and the 200 day moving average is from around 94 to 96. And so we can see that these are 
at a not a crossroad so we can tell that there's some information we gained from the discrepancy between these two values and how it's been trending up in the more recent days and it was trending a lot more negatively in the past 100 to 200 days plotting the two different moving averages the 100 day and 200 day and this allows to gain more insights into the data and see where the two curves intersect and the trend of the previous 100 and 200 days. Um, so we can see that we're making an axis. We're doing calling the function subplot to grid, which is um, how we can make a graph from different portions of the data. And we're adding some fixed um, inputs just to determine the size of the graph. So six by one, and then starting at zero, the column span one length and the row span five. And then we plot the 100 day moving average and 200 day moving average independently. And we then show that plot and we can see from 2010 to 2015, which were our date ranges, the general trend in the different curves. So we can see that they start pretty similar and then the 100 day picks up and is higher and there's a point of crossover at around early 2013 where the 100 day moving average drops significantly more than the 200 day moving average which implies that the more recent days have been more volatile because the 200 day moving average has more um, previous data in it that counteracts the decline in recent day trading prices um, so you can tell that if the 200 day moving average is not moving as much as the 100 day moving average that there was recently some sort of spike or uh, rapid decline in the price of the underlying asset that caused this change in the 100 day moving average over a more significant change in the 200 day moving average. Then you can see they slowly rise up together with the 100 day moving average being higher which again shows that these more recent days have been more uh, productive for the stock price and it's been outpacing the 200 day moving average. So that's about it. Um, if you guys like this tutorial, please remember to like, uh, comment with any questions, and subscribe to the channel. And there will be a lot more content coming out in the next few weeks. And I really hope you guys stay around and learn a lot more about al algorithmic trading.